Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mountain Studio. And in the last video, we talked about using threads. We had a problem, it was taking too long for our table view to load up, so we used threads to speed that up. And now the UI loads up really fast. When we get the table data, then we load it afterwards. Now what we're going to do is we're going to improve our code a little bit by implementing a closure into our function where we get the data. So what that'll do is that'll enable us to know when the data was fetched, when we got it back, and then we can respond to that in any way we want. And in this case, what we're going to do is when we get that data back, we're going to reload the data in the table view. So let's go to our model here, our data layer, and let's look at the code where we get the data. So right now, it's just the signature of this function is pretty simple. We don't pass in any parameters, and when it's done, we return an array of model data. And as I showed you before, model data is a simple class with just three properties, so it just holds three pieces of information. We have an array of that, and that is the data that we see in our application. So, so here's our model data that gets repeated. We have, it's just three pieces of data. Image, name, description. Now, what we want to do in order to implement a closure, and by the way, a closure is just a, it's a self-contained block of functionality. Think of it like a function. A function has functionality like this right here, and you can pass that into a function. So it's basically passing functions into functions, passing functionality into functions, and returning functionality from a function. And that's what a closure is. And all closures have the basic syntax of this right here. So those are your parameters, and it returns some kind of data. And you can see even functions follow this syntax. Here's your parameters, and here's the data being returned. So this is, this is good to remember. This is the basic syntax right here for closures. So how do we use this? How do we actually implement a closure? Well, first of all, oh, before I get into that, there's one more thing I want to show you that will probably give you an idea, a better idea, because you've seen closures before. And here's one, if you've been following my videos, you've seen this, definitely you've seen this closure. If we do animate, here's a closure right here. See this completion? That's exactly what we're going to add to this function right here. Except we're not going to uh, return a bool, we're going to return this array of model data. So if we implement this, and let's just get this here real quick. You could do this. Another way, instead of void, you could just do that right there. And that follows the same thing. Okay, so that's what we're going to. And basically what this completion handler does is this completion handler gets executed after any code, after your animation gets run right here. So after your animations are done, completion handler happens after. So that's what we're going to do. We want the get data to happen, and then when it's done, the completion handler will get triggered, will get executed. Now remember, it's a parameter in the function. So we're going to change it like this. I'm going to give it a name. We'll just call it completion. And remember our syntax? We're just going to use that right there. So there's our syntax right there. This is actually a function. It has your input parameters and your return values. I could also write this this way. <laughs> if I can spell void. This is the same thing. So nothing's being returned. And with here, nothing's being returned. It's up to you how you want to write it. All right, now, notice this function actually doesn't return any data anymore. I deleted that part that returns data that came after here. So I'm deleting that because we're not returning anything anymore. And that's why we're getting this error here. Instead... Remember, this parameter is actually a function. You have to remember that. This is a function. And so what we're going to do is when this code finishes, when we get all this data, we're going to call this function called completion right there. And we are going to pass in this data. So it's kind of like this. This is kind of like the same thing. Function completion, we'll say data. And we're passing in an array of data. Yep. We're not going to return anything. 
this is basically what's happening. After our code is being completed, it's like we're calling this function right here, except this function gets called where this gets called. So I'll keep this here for reference. Let me just comment it out though, make sure it doesn't cause any problems. Okay, now how do we use this in our view controller? Well, if we come here, notice this is breaking now. It doesn't, doesn't know what's going on. So this function used to return data, it doesn't return data anymore. So let's get rid of this. It just gets called. And let's see what happens if I go to, if I go to create it and I look at the parameters. So now the syntax is a little bit different, right? So the completion is telling us right here is actually a function. And this function will get called at the end of our, you know, as you saw, it gets called at the end after we're done getting the data. So I'm just hitting enter and it auto completes it. And I'm going to hit enter again. And it, it, it just basically, it's formatting it. Now, I think you're starting to understand here a little bit. You can still see the function here. You know, never mind that, that this is a parameter. You can see that this is a function. These are your input parameters. And then this is the body of your function right here that, that comes after the, the in. So we're passing in an array of model data. And we need to give that a name. So we'll just call it data. And it is a type of model data. So I could write that, but it's it's kind of redundant. I don't have to, because as I saw when we first came in here like this, uh, it's not going to show it now because it's already done, but you, it showed you the type it was already. So we know this data type, and I wonder if I can do this. If I hit question mark? No. Can I, will it tell me the quick help? No, it won't. Oh, what if I just do, I do this. Oh, here we go. So this is how you can tell. Uh, I just hold down the option key and I click on get data and then you can see the signature right here. So you can see the, the data type right here that's being passed in. So data is an array of model data. Okay, good. So now what do we do with that? We're, it's being passed into the function and now we're inside the function. And now we want to assign it to this, this variable called table data. Just like that. Oh, but yeah, that's fine. And so in this function, we, we can also put this code back in there too. So let's take that out. So we're assigning the data and then we're going to reload the data too. And you know what, this actually might work without this. There, let's just, okay, let's try it, see what we get. No, it doesn't. So we do need that. Did it give us a warning? This part won't be in there. Yeah, we've gotten a warning from that. Okay. Okay, so this looks good. So again, after this get data gets called, and when it's complete, this function gets called. And here, this is the body of the function. So the completion function or closure gets called. And we know, because we wrote this function, we know that if we go in here, this function only gets called at the very end of get data. So we know it's happening right at the end. That's why we called it completion because, I mean, if we put, if we called it up here, we wouldn't call it completion. We'd call it something else. <laughs> you know, we'd probably call it like start of function or whatever. But because it happens at the end, we call it completion. That's kind of like a convention. I know you guys are familiar with seeing that word from doing all the uh, UI animation work that you've seen in my tutorials. So it, I think it was good just to use the same name. Okay, we're not done yet. So right now, I think you have a pretty good idea what a closure is. But we're not done. This still looks kind of messy, and I, I don't like it. And what I'm going to do is, now what I want to do is I want to move this threading into get data. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because in your applications, there, you're for certain, if, if you're, an, you're going to be an iOS developer, you're going to be developing apps, sometime in your future, you are going to be accessing data that is not contained in your application. You're going to be going out somewhere else to get it. You're going to be 
maybe using a Twitter API or a Facebook API to get Facebook data, you know, something like that, or from a, a Firebase or a Couchbase, you know, repository. And so you're going to be implementing functions like this, and that's, that's why I'm showing it to you. Now, this is valid. This will work. But it, to me, it just looks kind of messy. So what I want to do is I actually want to take this code here. I'm going to copy it for now. And we're going to add it to this function here. Uh, you see how this turns white? This bothers me <laughs> to no end, I swear to God. So I'm going to, uh, if I just hit Command-0, zero, 0, it goes away and highlights the file. Just so you can see where I'm at. All right, good. So here's our get data function. I'm just going to paste in the code that allows us to execute this on a background thread. And for now, I'm just going to enclose everything. And I'm going to indent everything here. There we go. Okay, everything's happening on a background thread. And there's one other small change that I'm going to make. We're getting uh, some kind of error here. And it says parameter completion is implicitly non-escaping. Now notice we're running this on a background thread. And remember what happened before where the the steps that happened where basically the order of execution is it will come here, it'll start running this on a background thread, and then it will be returned immediately. It'll go back immediately and it'll wait until this is done before it goes back to whoever called this. So when that happens, it can't just return this immediately. It can't return completion data immediately. So when this is finished running in this background thread, it needs to escape out of here. What Apple says is, a closure is said to escape a function when the closure is passed as an argument to the function. But it is called after the function returns. Now, the, why is the function returning? The function is returning right away because we're running it on a background thread. Your program is kind of like taking this code and saying, go ahead and do what you want. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. And it returns back to the main UI thread, you know, and it returns back to your application. And it doesn't care when this finishes. It just doesn't care at all. So that completion will happen after the function already returns. And we can we can do another test, you know, so I can show you this. But first, what I'm going to do is, is what Apple rec is recommending here for us is adding this escaping right here. And it's basically just indicating that this will be returned at a separate time, not when it comes down. So it's basically, basically what it's saying is this will be returned second. And if you want to see that in action, we can do the print again. I can just show you real quick. So what's going to happen is it'll come here, and this will be step one. It'll come into the function first. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to come here next. It's going to kick this off. It's going to kick off this thread, and it's going to come right down here. Step two. And then the last thing to happen is this completion right here. Because it's going to wait two seconds, and then it'll get returned. So let's run that. First of all, let me check something. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Uh, here, we can take get rid of this first, because we implemented that in our function. All right, now let's run it. Okay, now let's look at our output. Yeah, okay, so we have step one happen first. <laughs> I forgot the space in there. Step two, and then, that's interesting. So this happened next, the elapsed time happened next, and then step three happened. So the closure, the running of the closure, the completion handler, was the last thing that was run. Okay, we have one more thing that I want to do. I still don't want this main threading declaration happening in here. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to get rid of that too. And let's get rid of this. And let's fix the indenting. There we go. Now let's go back to here. So what I want to do is I want to return the completion on the main thread. So right now we're on the background thread. What we had before was fine. But I think it would be a lot better if we just did this. Just do that right there. So now the completion will be returned on the, the main thread. 
And now I don't have any threading code. I'm just I'm just cleaning this up while I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> and now we don't have any threading code back on our view controller. And I think this looks way cleaner. You know, I think if another developer comes in here, he doesn't have to worry about what's happening in get data. He can see that you're getting the data and when it comes back and it's finished, you're just assigning it to the table data and then you're reloading it. So let's run that. That should work and we shouldn't have any more problems. Okay, two seconds goes by and then you get your data. Okay, great guys. We accomplished a lot here today. I know that this, this these are some boring topics, but they're, they're actually really important and, and it's good to have. So I showed you how to move your threading into your function and how to create a closure so you have a, a completion handler where you can uh, handle data that you get back from some mysterious data source <laughs> from wherever. And then we came in here and I showed you how to execute something on background thread and then return it on the main thread. I hope this helps. This is a good pattern to understand and to, to have and hold on to. I know before we made a code snippet, but you can even turn this into a code snippet, you know, take out all the stuff that you don't need and just create a code snippet for that. So if you ever need to get data in the future, you just type in your keyword, get data, hit tab, and it puts in this going onto a background thread and then back onto the main thread and it has your completion, your closure already typed out up top. So I hope this helped. If you learned something new, give it a thumbs up. And also one more thing, this is a, a difficult topic for me to teach because you know, I don't normally teach these kind of things. I'm more like kind of like a user experience, uh, UI type of guy. I do love going into these things sometimes, but it's a little bit harder for me to teach because it's hard for me to gauge if I'm going too fast or too slow for you guys. So please give me some feedback on these types of videos because I want to improve myself and get better at teaching uh, these kinds of topics. Share it with your friends if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing. All right, thanks guys.